Hello and welcome. I'm Craig Harrington. The United States has watched as its economic stability and sovereignty were whittled away over the past several decades. This is no better exemplified than a recent overseas trip by Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. During her week-long tour, she visited Japan, Indonesia, South Korea, and China, and along the way discussed many important issues about the United States and its economy. Hundreds of U.S. companies have relocated and outsourced their productive facilities into East Asia, particularly in, into countries like China and Indonesia. These countries produce the goods at low cost that American consumers buy and are therefore very important to our market. Japan and China particularly are very important not only because of the goods they produce, but because of the funding they give our government. China currently holds $696 billion worth of outstanding U.S. foreign-owned debt. Japan owns roughly $578 billion in that debt. Combined, they own 47% of the foreign-owned debt that's circulating through the world. One of the focuses of Secretary Clinton's trip overseas was her attempt to encourage the central banks of Japan and China to continue buying U.S. Treasury bonds and therefore continue accumulating U.S. debt. Each of them is the world's largest holder of U.S. debt, and we need them to continue buying our Treasury bonds in order to keep our government operational. There has been some concern internationally that the U.S. Treasury bond would be reduced to the status of a junk bond as our fiscal irresponsibility continued to undermine the entire economy. These countries hold very, very important sway over the United States. With nearly half of the foreign-owned debt in their hands, they own an economic bomb. They could release it at any point and undermine our economy, so we need them to continue buying our bonds and prop us up. The United States and China used to discuss things like international human rights and currency manipulation, but as it currently stands, those issues weren't on the table. Typical issues, which are usually on the table for discussions between the U.S. and China, were left off because the United States can no longer dictate the terms of the argument or the arrangement. China holds all the sway. In fact, the economies of China and America have become so intertwined that they depend on one another. China depends on the United States to continue buying their production and be their main market of export. At the same time, the United States depends on China to continue funding our government and our economy. In the end, however, all the profits end up in Beijing, not in the United States. Hillary Clinton, in particular, had a very hard stance against China when she was campaigning for the presidency. But now that she's a Washington insider, now that she's part of the administration, she's realized that she doesn't have a foot to stand on. We cannot dictate terms to the Chinese. We have to accept those that they give us. And we're learning that right now. On behalf of Concerned Citizens, I'm Craig Harrington with economyandcrisis.org news. Wake up, America! Open up your eyes! Wake up, America! Wake up! Produced by economyandcrisis.org.